Hey, what's up? Welcome to DeFi 2. Today, Certec, I don't know what to say, man. Y'all did us wrong on this one. For real, y'all did us wrong on this one. We about to watch a video of Brian talking about it and all the things that happened. Stay tuned. Alright, so this is the video with Brian talking about the whole Certic thing and what's going on. You can see the anger in his face, but let's watch the video. Everyone's kind of getting fearful, which is no reason for that, alright, first of all, okay? Um, but what I wanted to, to really drive home here is Certic took our funds, alright? So we paid them 25000 bucks, alright, up front to do the KYC, to do the audit, to do the... Um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what do you call it? I'll look it up again. The, um, called? Mm, um, what's it called again? Forgot what it's called now. Skynet. That's what it's called. Apologies. Um, so yeah, we paid them 25 grand for the audit for the, um, KYC and for the Skynet. Okay. So we paid that up front. Let me share my screen with you guys. Um, not this one but my actual screen, which is this one. Cool. All right, so this is my Telegram, okay? Um, so you can see, obviously, who I'm talking to here, but look, don't worry about too much of that. All that we need to worry about is um, Certic, okay? So this is a conversation between me and Danny. So Danny is a business relations manager. She's the one who controls, you know, who gets listed on Certic. Obviously, about prices, that's who you, you're dealing with, right? So this is a conversation between me and her, and you can see this dates back until March the 5th. You probably can't see this on my screen. Let me just get rid of my overlay. There we go. Um, so now you can see a little bit better. So March the 5th, it says up here. Okay, so this is when the conversation started. I'm not going to read through all this, all right? But basically, she's saying, okay, here's the packages. Here's what we can do, all right? I asked how much for the service package. She goes 25 uh, and, you know, is it 25K? She goes, yes, minimum is 25K. And it's, you know, it varies based on the code, okay? Um, and she goes, I'll update you after I hear back from the engineer. And I said, yep, okay, you know, 25K is fine. We paid the $25,000, okay? Um, and then it just by... Let me cut it off real quick. You see how transparent he is? You see how he's going through all the messages, trying to show to us what's really going on? He's not trying to hide anything. Is that not somebody trustworthy? Is that someone trying to hide things from you? This protocol is needed. Not a lot of DeFi projects can even come up on the live and talk to you like this. But Brian can. I don't know about you, but that should get at least some type of respect. You feel me? Let's get into the video. You can read all this, okay? Um... But I want proof on this live stream. Um, so then Certic cannot deny all this crap, okay, what's going on. But you can read through all this for yourself, all right? Basically, she sent me through the invoice. Um, I then paid um, the transaction here, okay? So we can, you know, you can click that and you can see the transactions being paid. Um, and then it went, you know, then she, we got listed, as you see on the link, all right? We got listed, um, which we announced was fine um, and I said yeah oh my god you're the greatest because she listed us very very quickly so she was fine I got no problem with Danny at all okay um, and then I on March the 19th which was four days ago all right I said hey Danny excuse me why on earth does our page say safe <gasps> what in the world is going on let's talk about this way everything went smooth he got the order everything was good before they even assigned the order to him and KYC and everything, Brian's background and check everything before they even give him that audit. Why they waited till after the fact? This doesn't make a lick of sense. That's that's fishy. That I don't know. That that don't sit right with me. Let's continue. Fu is delisted. It must be an error. Please fix this. This is urgent. And she goes, let me check. All right. And she goes, she just checked, and it seems our designated team member has reached out to you and conducted the KYC process. Now on this, that did occur, okay? So I had a conversation with this guy here on the left of my screen, which I'll show you in a second, okay? 
um, Christopher, um, and I had a KYC call with him. Like it was a live chat um, where he asked me a bunch of questions, you know, full KYC, asked me about older projects. I told him about exactly what happened with all these other projects. And that's what she's saying that he reached out, which is correct. All right. And then, then she goes, she goes on and says, and they flagged your project as a potential suspicious info. They didn't tell me the details, blah, blah, blah. So we delisted the project until further notice. And I responded, Hey, this is disgusting. I had a KYC with, you know, call with Chris last night and things were smooth, which are what the call went fine. Um, and you know, and then <laughs> I, I messaged her all this sort of stuff here. Okay. What the hell is going on? This message here, I've only forwarded to her, okay? So what we're gonna do is have a look at what I messaged him, which is this Chris guy, all right? Um, so this is him basically saying, hey, you know, welcome on board. Thanks for the KYC badge. This is his name, Chris Kadeen, all right? So that's the guy, the background investigator, all right? So if you read all through this, it basically says, um, you know, I've done a KYC call. Then I, then I basically said the next day, because literally only three hours after that KYC call, you know, they flagged it or delisted us, right? And I said, hey, why is it delisted? It's an error. Please fix this. It's urgent. I said, it looks bad. What have you done? And then Danny, which was the person that we just covered, said to me that you flagged our project as suspicious. What the hell, man? All right? And I said, and you can see these are red messages. So he's read it. He just hasn't answered, okay? So he's totally ignoring this. And I said, this is total 100% total bullshit and completely unacceptable from both a moral and professional business standpoint. You cannot accept $25,000 from us and then get all our KYC info, do a video call with me and then decide it's suspicious. What, you know, WTF, suspicious, total bullshit, which it is. Nothing suspicious about it. And, I, and then I said, how do you get the nerve to delist us just after a few short hours um, you know, has passed from our KYC video call you did and together last night, right? So it's it's, it's absolutely ridiculous um, why they've done that. And um, I asked him, you've got two options here. I said, you can reinstate our listing and apologize or remove the KYC portion and then continue on with our listing that we paid for, right? Which is the order and Skynet, no KYC, all right? And I basically went on to say, hey, look, you know, obviously it's totally unprofessional for them to do that is just unlist a project and say hey it's too suspicious for us we're not going to work with you after we paid them all, all the money up front which is you know it's we paid all the money up front we got to get something in return right they promised to deliver hey we're going to deliver you the kyc deliver you the order deliver you the the skynet thing but they haven't done anything they're actually just ignoring everything um now i actually and why i'm doing this live stream is because i'll that's another fishy thing. Why are they giving Brian a cold shoulder? What, what are you doing, man? If Brian was trying to, if Brian was trying to scam us and everything they see back there is wrong and everything, they would have just given him the twenty-five k and left, just like that. So why are they giving him the cold shoulder? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Went into Certix, um group literally about fifteen minutes ago. And I was talking to the admin there and said, you know, um, this is totally, you know, it's defamation what you're doing on our against our character. We paid twenty five thousand. I want to get a refund, and I was just banned at the group. That's what happened. They just banned me totally out the group. That's crazy. That seems like it makes sense, but it doesn't. Is that professional behavior from a multi million dollar enterprise Certic Gold Label auditor? No, they're not meant to be doing that at all. So it's absolutely stupid. Um, let me log in with my other account, all right, this other SAFO account. And what we'll do is we'll go live on Certic together and we'll see what they say, all right? Let me go to their Telegram group. Let's open that. All right, so this is Certic, all right? So let's do this live together, guys. And let's see if I get booted out again. Let me join. Cool. Brian Legend here again. Could I get an answer? I'm just typing this in real time so you guys can see this, all right? Um, let me get, let me switch off my camera just so you can, uh, you can see me a little bit clearer. You can see this a little bit clearer. I get an answer on the refund of the 25k paid to you. Flow mode is enabled. 
Um, let's see what they say, because I literally got banned um, 15 minutes ago just for asking these kind of questions. So, you know, you can't do that as a business or as an organisation. You can't just accept $25,000 up front, then deliver absolutely nothing, and instead you label a contract, I mean, label, you know, to be label this uh, partnership a potential scam or something like that, you can't do that. And then when I go into the Telegram to ask about stuff, I just get banned. Um, so they deleted all my messages. You can see here, um, I actually, they kept one of my messages. So you can see I was actually in here as proof. Um, and I basically said both Danny and, and Chris were ignoring me and you took my funds, right? So they deleted my other messages. I had about four or five other messages which they've deleted and banned me. But this is, at least they've kept the message here so you can see that I actually was in here and I'm definitely banned at this group. So now I'm just using a secondary account, guys. Um, but it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Look, first of all, why I'm doing this live stream is to be totally upfront and transparent with you guys like I've always been, right? and to, to be totally direct with you and to just show you exactly what's going on and honest, right? That's it. And that's all I've been the entire time is honest with you guys. So, you know. We need to talk about this. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. You can see how mad he is about this whole thing. He's trying to stay strong. You can see his body language. You can see the, his voice is cracking. You can see it. He's forgetting words. He's mad. He, he was investing into this audit. He wanted this whole thing to pass. But now they're trying to scam him. You can see how invested he is into this protocol. All the people that are selling now, those are the people that follow the wave. They didn't do no research, no nothing. They just follow the wave. Now they here it is, they sell it. Usually Brian would do an hour long AMA or uh, at least 50 minutes. But today he cut it. He just did like 20 to 30 minutes and he was out. You can see the emotion in that. Like He, he can't even believe this. And now for some rapid fire facts. Let's look at the facts. Before you even join this protocol, we all knew who Brian was. We knew about his past. We knew who he, he is as a person. And all the fud that's going around his name. I don't know about you guys, but I joined this project based on how transparent Brian is and how open he is. I joined this project based on the person, not based on the, the, that person's past or what people have to, or the fud that people have to say about this person. I join it based on the trust he shows us and the transparent and open he is towards everything in his protocol. I don't know about you, but that should show some type of respect. But you can kind of tell when somebody's trying to play you. There's a little voice behind your head that shows you or that tells you somebody's trying to play you. You're trying to see it, but with Brian, I can't really see it. Because how open he is. Is someone that's trying to wrong? Is someone that's trying to right their past? And I can see how he's really trying. The way Brian gets up every day and does a live and explain to us what's going on in the protocol, what's next, that's what everybody wants. I need it! When their money is invested into a project, you want somebody like that to talk to you every day, to explain to you what's going on, to explain to you what's coming next. You want that, and Brian has delivered to that. So why this Surdy thing gonna be a big problem? Surdy can't really nothing like that. Just a bunch of people collecting money to verify your project. Brian wants everyone to understand him and understand what this whole protocol is about. And he wants you to understand he's trying to right his wrong from all the failed projects he's done. How many people we know or how many people we heard of or how many movies have we watched when somebody's trying to right their wrong but some people want to just let them I don't understand I don't understand because they're ignorant and how closed minded they are the people that buy the dip right now are going to be the one happy in a couple of months from now trust me because this protocol is not going to die no no mm -mm. Mm -mm. no 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 hell no no based on the transparency and honesty of brian people won't just give it up like that i wasn't paid for this video so i would appreciate if you like and subscribe to the channel as you can see i only have four subscribers please this is serious so for me to invest in this project i trust brian but like and subscribe i greatly appreciate it